Hey, how is everybody doing? It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, I've missed you all, but it's good to see you now. Um, I, uh, as you know, we've uh, been moving, um, uh, and uh, it ended up being a little bit more hectic and chaotic than I anticipated. Uh, a lot more work than I anticipated, but we are here, and uh, this is my new office, although not really furnished yet, or even... Um, you know, well set up. It's the bare minimum I needed to get going. So uh, happy to be here. Good morning, Anna. Thanks for joining me. Um, so yeah, so you know we're uh, you know we're getting we're getting acclimated. We're getting uh, we're getting on with uh, with with our uh, with our new community here. Um, we're still sitting at a folding table in the kitchen for dinner. Uh, with like hard wooden folding chairs. In fact, I'm sitting on one right now because you know we don't have any stuff yet. We're waiting for some some stuff to come in. Um, but you know, look, uh, it's it's uh, you know we're it's all good things, all good things. So, uh, but you know, one of the things that I really wanted, like like this, so in my personal life, like for five years now, uh, the top goal for us was to to get into a, a community for our kids. Um, and so that's what, like the primary personal goal that we've been working toward, um, you know, aside, aside from the stuff like, uh, you know, fixing our marriage, which obviously is a very big goal too, but like as a together goal, you know, getting our kids into a, into a better neighborhood was big. And so yesterday we saw, we got to see the benefit of that. Um, and that was this right here. Um, our kids uh, riding uh, his Power Wheels, the younger one riding his Power Wheels quad, and the other one riding his bike on a street with no traffic. Um, you know that right there was all of it. That's like the whole the whole reason for this. Um, you know, aside from you know you know up upgrading a little bit. Um, you know, uh, this was it. Like they were out there forever. Like, you know, it seemed like forever anyway. It's much longer than, than they've played outside uh, in our old place. Um, you know, we used to have to drive 20 minutes to the park to get them in the flat, flat parking lot to do this. And uh, so my oldest was riding his bike. Uh, and then by the time he was done, his, his legs were like burning, he said. Um, you know, so it was, it was fun. It was fun. There's a lot of kids. Uh, there's always people walking up and down the street with their dogs or their kids. So... Um, you know, it's a younger community. We went from being uh, the old, or the, I'm sorry, the youngest people in the community by 10 or 20 years to now maybe being some of the older crowd. We're like in the older half of the community. Everybody that I've met so far that has kids is at least a couple of years younger, if not more. Uh, although there are some older people in the neighborhood, but for the most part, it's starting to turn over. So it's been pretty cool. Pretty cool. But yeah, they got to enjoy their day um, yesterday. One of the first warm days we've had here, so it's been nice. And I apologize. I can feel myself sniffing already. Allergy season kicked in for me yesterday. I opened the windows in the house to get some fresh air in here. Um, and uh, man, <laughs> it hit me like a ton of bricks. So it's been closed for uh, the windows have been closed for the evening. Uh, and I got out of the shower, so I'm, I'm clear now, but I hope this doesn't kick me while I'm talking to you guys. So let me go through the comments here. Uh, good morning, Anna. I already said good morning to you, but good morning again. I missed you. Uh, good morning, Amy. Good morning, Lori. Thank you very much, Carrie. Good morning to you. Good morning, Deb. I am back. And Debbie, you know, hopefully we're going to be able to do this every day uh, from now going forward. Um, I got my basics set up here. And, uh, you know, schedule seems to be fairly normal, but we're going to be talking about that today, about balance and, uh, you know, how we handle, like, times like what I've just gone through in the past week and some of my, you know, anecdotal observations. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, good morning. Good to see you, too. Good morning, Janice. It is not a sunny day. I know I like your smiley, sunny emo emoji there, but uh, it's not a sunny day. But we'll be warm, though, going into the 70s. I'm really excited for that. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, good to see you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. And hey, all the people that are private in the user group, just so you know, in case you didn't catch it in one of the previous videos, 
your 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 name is going to show up as unknown if you're in the user group. It gives you a little bit extra privacy. Uh, if you want to be public with your name, uh, you can catch us on the Define My Day Facebook page or on YouTube. Hey, Tina. Thanks for joining us from Phoenix. Um, yeah. First time watcher. Thank you. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, good morning. I missed you guys too. I missed you guys too. Uh, this is, uh, you guys really get me thinking and I love hearing, uh, some of the stuff that you guys have going on. So, uh, it, it, this has been like that thing that I felt like I needed to get back to part of my balance. I know I am too. I am so happy for the kids. I, I it's like watching them do this. Um, and it takes a, it takes away from the screen time and, they get out to like just get out and and run around and even my dog i should have i should have posted a video of our dog we have a 13 almost 13 year old golden retriever and she has not been um she's not like she's she's almost been like kind of slowing down in recent years and um since she's been here for the past 2 weeks she has been running around like crazy i mean she is a happier dog right now um, you know, she loves going out in the yard. She goes out in the front yard. There's a bunch of other dogs around. So she gets to see other dogs. Um, it's funny cause he like, even her mentality, even her attitude is better. It's pretty cool. Um, Mesa, Arizona. Very cool. We got some Arizona people. Um, awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Tina, for your order. Appreciate it. Um, first timer in Santa Barbara. Awesome. Julie. Thank you. Uh, seemed to be more productive. So, um, I am going to be more productive now. I'm going to be more productive with these videos. I'm going to be more productive in this space. I am really looking forward to being more productive myself. Um, what? Kim is a professional organizer, move manager, have three clients to move this summer from a 2,000 square foot to 6,000 square feet. Oh my goodness. 6,000 square feet. Uh, wow. Uh, but yeah, so... I'm really hoping that this is my last move. If I ever move again, I want to be in that place where I can afford 6,000 square feet and I can say, hey, uh, have that all set up for me and I'll, I'll be there when you're done. <laughs> I mean, because this was crazy. Uh, we didn't hire movers. You know, I, I didn't hire movers because we didn't have a whole lot of furniture to move. I didn't realize how much stuff we still had regardless of furniture. Um, but I also didn't want people touching my stuff, you know, just, just with this. I kind of just wanted to handle it myself. We had some friends that chipped in, which was awesome. In fact, they did more than chip in. Um, they were crucial. Uh, but even then, there was still a lot of organizing and unpacking and, and, and you know, like stuff broke, you know, that I, uh, even after it got here, I broke it by accident. So, you know, there's a lot of things we're dealing with. Uh, you know, rooms that we didn't realize needed to be repainted had to be repainted because once the furniture was gone, you know, it just didn't look as good as we thought and carpet we had to remove and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so it was a lot of upheaval, a lot of, a lot of upheaval. Um, definitely don't want to have to go through this again. Absolutely not. Uh, and Sandy in Texas is new also. We have a lot of new people, a lot of new people in recent weeks, huh? Uh, bought the, all the planners and they flew <laughs> as I, wait, I'm sorry. I can't read this. Um, I'm new too. bought all the planners and they flew it as in, I told my friends and they all took one. So I'll have to place a new order. Hey, I like to hear that. I like to hear that. So very cool. Appreciate you sharing. That's awesome. And Julie's moving in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Good for you. Congratulations. Are you staying in Santa Barbara? Uh, Mary, good morning. Have the books have not been consistent. So it's okay, right? So like whatever has happened, doesn't matter. We're moving forward, right? Um, and, uh, I think that, you know, it, it's, it's that perspective, right? Like it's just not something we do. It's something we become, right? And if we're becoming anything, it's more disciplined with our behavior and owning, uh, who we want to be. And I think that's, that's a huge part of this. So, um, you know, realize that, you know, in all of this, uh, you know, define my day is the tool and the process of becoming more disciplined and more focused on intentional action is the person you are becoming by using this tool. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today in, in this discussion too. 
Oh, so you were in on the user group, Helen. Cool. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, oh my goodness. Allergies. Uh, I thought I was going to make it through this season. I thought I was going to make it. And uh, yesterday just hit me hard. Hit me hard. Uh, yeah. All right. It's cool. Stay, staying in Santa Barbara. Moving about a mile away. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, wait. What happened? Brenda, thank you, but I don't think that's the one I meant to post. Um, so, uh, got the planner a few weeks ago. Haven't started it yet. Need to because my head spins every day. And I get that. And so today's discussion might be helpful for you because we're talking about this, like, I went through for two weeks now this head spinning routine, right? So, my goal was to get back to the sense of routine and, 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 uh, you know, this, this sense of like balance in life where I'm not, going too crazy, not relaxing too much in this like uh, uh, intentional movement forward every day. And that's where we need to get. So a lot of times we get stuck either in stagnation or we get stuck in this reactive like craziness, head spinning craziness. So the goal is to find that balance so that we can move forward in an intentional way. So that's what we're talking about today. Uh, haven't started yet. Uh, another new person. We have a lot of new people today, so I'm happy you guys are all here with us today. Thank you. Um, haven't started yet. Will be Sunday. Excited to get started. Cool. I'm excited for you too. Sunday's a good day to start. Uh, Kristen, I feel like I'm finally adjusting to our new normal, so I'm ready to refocus on banishing my bad habits. Yes. Yes. So this new normal, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're all dealing with it in our own ways, uh, and now we're kind of settling um, and you see like some people are moving around more. Some people are getting like a little bit more comfortable with seeing people, even if you're social distancing a little bit, other people are just getting used to being isolated. It's kind of, it's different for everybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're kind of, we're kind of getting a little bit used to it. You can sort of see that in the way people are, are, are handling their daily lives. So, um, so our meme, we go through our memes of the day. We have, I have one meme today. Uh, and this is so me right now is that like me trying to get anything done. And then the kid going into excruciating detail about a YouTube video. It is my daily, like I want to be present. I want to be, uh, there with my kid and I want to, I want to have that conversation and I want to be, you know, down at his level, but there's only so much about YouTube videos that I can hear about Roblox and, and all this stuff. And, you know, so you, you, you know, especially when you're at home and trying to work and you're, you know, there's so much going on and you're stressed out and you got this like, <laughs> like behind you, like about a YouTube video. And I'm like, you know, there's times where you want to stop and say, okay, yeah, yeah. Awesome. You know, and, and go into it. And then there's other times you're like, not now. So everybody's going through it. Absolutely. And Mary from Ohio just happened to see your email about this live discussion. Have no idea that you created this forum to help with defining my day. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So that's an internal discussion that we've had here uh, at our, you know, offices, our virtual offices, especially recently. Um, you know, we're trying to figure out how to best get everybody aware of all the resources we have out there. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to get it out to everybody in a better way. So if anybody has any more ideas, um, you know, we're happy to, happy to have a discussion with you about, um, you know, what, what's the best way to get information out to you? Uh, because we want to help as much as possible. And we want you guys to use to find my day as best possible. So, um, you know, anything we can do to help, um, you know, we're trying to send the more emails. We're trying to do more of these live videos. Uh, so let me know. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Appreciate it. Good to see you. And hello, unknown. Good to see you. All right. So, um, you know, one thing that I've seen in the news recently, and it's funny because you, as I observe, you know, whether you're observing, you know, the Democrats or Republicans or whether you're observing celebrities and how they're handling this, everybody has a perspective, right? So financial people are watching the economy. Uh, health health officials are, are watching, you know, health trends. Um, you know, and everybody's doing their thing. And, and one article that I've seen recently was about Ellen DeGeneres, right? 
Now, outward appearances, Ellen DeGeneres is a really positive person. She's an uplifting person. Everything about her persona is uplifting. And then there's these people that are coming out now and saying that she's cold, saying that she's she's kind of mean, actually. And so, you know, maybe there's a little bit of truth in both sides. And I think a lot of times what you find, and I think it's even what I've experienced, is that people can sort of create a persona, you know, I don't want to say it's the opposite because she may be an incredibly nice person, but cold in moments. And maybe her incredibly nice moments are sort of a counterbalance to her extreme cold moments, you know? And then you sort of end up somewhere in the middle for the most of the time. And I think that, you know, but at the same time, like she is kind of hurt now and from what I read that people are making these accusations and, and the fact that more and more people are, she's coming to this realization that it might actually be a little bit true and that maybe she did behave in a cold way to some people. And so she's gaining this new perspective and this new awareness. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's funny because, you know, I see this as I'm talking with people with really hardline perspectives. You see it really clearly. Uh, but people that, you know, that grow up, you know, or grow into a community where there's only one way of thinking and you think that's the right thing, you know, right? Even racists grow up this way, right? Like you just think that this is the way, the right way. And, and you have no proper perspective and you have no perspective from other people. And so I think a question that we all ask ourselves to, to bring it into balance, no matter where you are in any spectrum, uh, is how may I be wrong here? And if you ask that and you kind of try to switch your perspective to somebody else's, like if somebody's arguing with you and you ask, like, you know, if I'm in their position, what, how may I understand them a little bit better? It's an incredibly hard thing to do. Uh, and so Ellen is going through that right now. Like, how may I actually have been mean or cold in these times, right? So, you know, it, with one person saying it, you're mean. She might say, no, I'm not. But as, you're, as you face mounting evidence and a couple of people say you're mean, all right, now, wait a minute. How may I have, how may have I been mean? And uh, so, you know, even, you know, like that's, it's, it's hard. It's incredibly hard. But we have to take a moment to say, you know, maybe I'm wrong here, right? You might be like, I've been like definitely more on the health side of things with COVID, right? But so, you know, I have to ask myself like, hey, how may I like, how may like other people that are worried more about getting back to work, you know, how may this be affecting them? And how is it maybe more, um, more urgent that they get back to work and make money and get the economy rolling? What are they scared of? How may their lives uh, be negatively impacted. Like what, what's so important to them that they may ask, actually risk being sick. Right. And so they're balancing, you know, um, they're balancing the odds and the risks and trying to, uh, you know, make the best decision for them. And then they also put that out on everybody else. They think their decision is the best decision because it's great, great for them. It's best for everybody else. And it's never really true. Right. And you can even see how somebody, that, you know, grows up, you know, rich, you know, well, like Ellen, one of the things she said a couple of months ago is like, like staying in her mansion under quarantine is like going, like being in jail, like having zero perspective that there are people in like one bedroom studio apartments or one st like studio apartments that that might actually feel like jail when you can't leave that place. Right. Or people that are cooped up, you know, if somebody has like a, their domestic abusive, uh, an abusive relationship and they're stuck at home, you know, that's worse than jail for some people. So, you know, people like these celebrities are like, Oh, quarantining self-isolation sucks in my beautiful mansion. And so like you, it does suck for them because they're, you know, this is, this is terrible for them. They're used to going out and partying and having a great time going out to restaurants. And now for them, they're stuck in their mansion. Oh my God. Like everybody has a different perspective and a different experience. So, you know, it's, it takes some, Take some some real work to understand where other people are. A lot of work. Bill, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Glad to see you. Um, Angel says, I think sometimes all the positivity is exhausting and sometimes you just have to set it aside 
And those people who are around at those times will get the perspective that positivity is a fake persona. You're absolutely correct, right? And I've experienced it in the smallest way here, right? I'm not always here, but it's my job to bring the best I can be to you, right? And sometimes, you know, like sometimes I'm having, I have some, I have bad moments. I have temperamental moments. I, I mean, I have, I have moments where I'm just, I, I can look back on it and say, yeah, I wasn't a good person right then. And I have to accept that. I'm doesn't mean I'm not a good person overall. I just made some bad decisions, but I have to be the best I can be for you guys, for my employees. Um, and, and I should be that way for my wife and my family and my kids. Unfortunately, they spend 24 hours a day with me and occasionally, occasionally catch the bad stuff too. Right. So, um, I, I'm sure that if somebody were to be here, you know, like uh, security or assistants or bodyguards or whatever Ellen has that people are compl the people that were talking about her, I'm sure if somebody were to see me every day, you could pick out little instances and you could say that using that instance, wow, he's, he's not as nice as he seems to be. Well, yeah, right? Because everybody has moments. Everybody has moments. And I think a lot of times the people that have extremely positive moments also have extremely negative mom moments, right? I mean, you're, you're like the people that are sort of down the middle are probably maybe a little boring to some people. It's the people that have like dynamic changes are the ones that generally seem to be more popular and more polarizing. And you get your haters and you get your your people that really love you. Um, you know, watching Michael Jordan, actually, this, this Last Dance uh, documentary that is going on on ESPN right now, watching that. Uh, you see like all the positives and negatives about Michael Jordan. Like one of the things was like when Scottie Pippen, like without Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan isn't quite, I mean, he's still great, but he's not quite the champion without Scottie Pippen. But Scottie Pippen was not well paid. And you would think that like somebody would say, you know, or Jordan would say, hey, let's pay this guy, right? Like what, I mean, like Mario Lemieux, one of my heroes in life, um, and, and Sidney Crosby, like they they made sacrifices uh, for their team, like their own pay so that they could have a good team around them. Michael Jordan could have said, not even sacrificing his pay, but could have said, Hey, Scotty, um, you know, let's, you know, like, like let's pay this guy, right? Cause he deserves it. He was like, no man, just play. Like it's your responsibility. Just play. Like, so that coldness that Jordan, like you, everybody idealizes Michael Jordan, but he was a pretty cold dude and apparently a big trash talker. So, you know, like it's, it's, you, there's always different components to people's personality and like she, Ellen turns it on for her TV show, but then at other times, you know, ugh, exhausted, right? I was, I was, I was on my game. I was out there. I was, you know, empowering everybody. And now I'm just like, I'm, I'm spent. I need, I need get away from me. Right. I mean, you know, like I can see that being the case. Um, Mary from Ohio. Um, Thank you for giving a great example of emotional intelligence. Ellen DeGeneres and others could use this feedback to reflect on the unique experience of others. Perspectives matter. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your feedback. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, I think, you know, it's hard. Like, I, I, I love to say, I would love, I, like, I love to think that if I were president or if I were a senator or if I were some, a governor, somebody right now, I would love to say that I would take in all the perspectives and make the best decision possible. But I know that there's a culture around these people. And it's a culture, whether it's their, their party or their social affiliations, they're hearing things. And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. That's right. They're not intentionally, I mean, the smartest ones are, but they're not intentionally going and talking to people to, and asking, how am I wrong? In what way am I wrong? That's not, that's, nobody wants to be wrong. So nobody goes out seeking to be wrong. That's probably one of the best things you can do, but it's not what most people do, especially if you're, if you're somebody that's successful, you're successful because you've been right in many cases. And, and I think that's, we've talked about it in the past. I think that's why small business owners uh, right now are having such a hard time because they, they're being asked to give up uh, control uh, and just allow things to happen around them and, and wait in a way. And that's not something that business owners, drivers do. You know, we want to 
we want to solve problems. And a lot of times right now, especially we can't solve problems. We just have to kind of ride it out. And that's just, that's not a comfortable position to be in. So it's hard. It's hard to go seeking alternative opinions and being accepting of them. Um, well, so today, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, the big thing I want to talk about today is balance and how, you know, we can be in balance and why we should try to be in balance. And, and, and so in, in this case right now, in my case, you know, I've been out of balance uh, for about two weeks now. I think the last time we really did a live session was last Thursday, I believe, if not Wednesday. Or no, I'm sorry, two Thursdays ago. And so, you know, what does that look like? What, you know, how has my, you know, how have I been out of balance? And, and the big thing is, number one, I really didn't do my define my day uh, many times at all in the past two weeks um, because I really had something right in front of me that needed to get finished, right? I needed to move. I needed to, um, you know, get everything in this house. I needed to solve problems in this house. I needed to unpack. I needed to get things set up. And there was a lot going on. So every day I'm getting up and I am out of balance. I, I'm like driven from the moment I wake up to crazy physical activity. And then at the end of the day, I'm exhausted, go to bed and wake up and do the same thing. And I needed to, like, I needed to get things done. And it's why I didn't come back to work for a couple of weeks because I knew the if I came back to work early, if I brought things back into balance early, then I wasn't, I was going to have things left undone that were absolutely urgent that needed to be done, right? They were both urgent and important, needed to get done. And if I left them hanging out there, it was going to stress me out. It was going to, um, you know, make it, it was going to prolong this, this, this level of anxiety that I may have been going through. So I needed to, I needed to get this stuff off my plate. I needed to get the stuff done. I operated out of balance to get this stuff done as soon as possible. So I was sort of reacting to an emergency um, to, and operating in that way for almost two weeks. So, you know, I wasn't eating well. I wasn't sleeping well. I was exhausted and I wasn't taking care of, you know, my health, my business, and even relationships, right? I was just, I was just handling things you know, handling the most important, urgent things that I needed to do. Now, that is necessary, right? That is absolutely necessary. Like, I couldn't have done it any other way in my mind. But the longer that goes on, the more detrimental to me it is, right? So if I would have kept up with that pace, I would have become exhausted. My stress levels would have been up here and, and done detrimental things to my health. My eating habits would have continued to, to get bad or get worse, or, or even if they would have stayed the same, would have been unhealthy for me. My relationships would have been, you know, eroding as I didn't maintain them because I was too focused on this work that I had to do. And people get stuck in this mode, right? People get stuck in this mode where they're constantly like waking up, going, like handling things and not really taking a step back and asking, like, do I need to be doing this right now? Is there something more healthy I could be doing? You know, how do I bring things back into balance? And so they keep going and they're stuck in this gear. They're stuck in this high revving. Like if you think about a car, like you're just stuck in that high revving, your, your needle is, is bouncing off the red line and you're just, you're not handling things in the best way possible. And, and what happens when you do this with an engine, right? Eventually it blows. Eventually you have a nervous breakdown or like you just, like you just can't handle it. And so you, you have to, you have to come down a little bit and bring it back into focus and bring it back into balance. And that's what my, this week has been. This week has been my focus in trying to bring things back into balance. Like, okay, I got the really important things done. Now I, I need to start readjusting. So I got a fresh new define my day on Monday and I started uh, replanning out, you know, what, what my next 28 days is going to look like and what my milestones for this week are going to be. And it's a little bit weird because, you know, trying to bring things back 
it, it's hard, right? Because I've been going this hard for so long now, two weeks, but you know, other people I know go longer. Um, but it's different, right? Like, so now I'm like, okay, now I'm like trying to reorient myself to where life is right now. I'm even in a new environment. So, you know, I'm trying to reorient myself. And so I have to keep coming back to my define my day page and looking at it and going, okay, I need to come back to this. I need to come back to this. I need to, you know, I'm trying to schedule things out of my calendar a little bit better and follow that, that, and, and when you're, you know, when you're trying to bring it back down, like you're, you're, you're so used to reacting, you know, you, you want to keep going back to it, but then you have to go, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm trying to come back to balance, right? You have to keep having this like little conversation and your body's going, no, we need to keep going. And you're like, no, 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 we need to, we need to slow down a little bit. So, you know, I'm now in this week where I'm trying to do that refocusing, that readjusting, and I'm constantly bringing my attention back to the things that I've, I write down that I say, this is my intent. Like this is where I should be p placing my attention. And, and I'm failing a little bit through the day and I have to keep coming back and saying, no, don't get stuck into this high gear. Bring it back again, bring it back again. And, you know, and next week my goal is to start bringing the health back again, right? Making sure I take a walk around the block every day or, or exercising, do whatever I need to do. Uh, even if it's physical yard work activity like that, I need to start bringing my attention back to that place next week. Um, but I'm trying to do it in a planned out approach. And so, you know, the goal is to bring this equilibrium. It won't always be this way, right? Like I'm, there are going to be other times that arise where I wake up and I'm going to have to go hard charging, right? That needle's going to be up there again and I'm going to be hard at it and I'm going to be exhausted. But my goal should always to be to, to bring it back to equilibrium. Now, people can get stuck the other way too. And that's what I've seen a lot right now in this whole COVID-19 uh, era that we're in is that people get into this like, I have nothing prodding me. I have nothing pushing me. I'm stuck at home. All right. I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit on the couch forever. Right. And so you get stuck in that, that like neutral, right? So now we're not stuck hard charging. Now we're, now we're in neutral, right? Now we're stalling out. All right. You can't get stuck there either. It, it, you have to like, you have to bring it back up. Like, so you're going to be like, I understand being in that place. I understand being in that place. I've been in that place at points in my life. You can't get stuck there. You know, you have to start like, you have to get it in the gear and you have to give it a little bit of gas. Don't, don't hit it too hard. So you stall, but you know, start giving it a little bit of gas and getting that momentum going again. Right. And we, we have to bring it back to this healthy place because too hard is unhealthy and, and stuck idling is unhealthy too, right? So we need to keep moving forward in this healthy way. And like, think, you know, sometimes you just need to rest. Sometimes you need to be in this place where, you know, you're not doing anything and you're just letting things go and you're just decompressing. I get it. And sometimes you need to go really hard and get things done. I get that too. The effort needs to be to bring it back here, right? In this like safe zone, right? This, this cruise control kind of zone where we're, we're making progress and we're doing it in a healthy way. We're not burning too much gas. We're not burnt blowing up the engine. Uh, we're, we're just, we're just cruising along, making progress, moving toward our destination, right? Whatever your goals are, right? And so that's, that's how I look at this is that we go hard sometimes and we have to bring it up, bring it back down. We take it easy. Sometimes we have to bring it back up. And that's where this method in define my day can help you is that, you know, look, sometimes you're just going to feel like you don't want to do anything. I get it. And we want to say, okay, yeah, but today I'm going to do this thing. This is the one thing I need to get done. And other times we're going to be in this place of high revving and we're going to say, you know what? Yeah, but I still need to get this. I need to be healthy for myself. And there are going to be times where you just disregard this book altogether. Like I did for the past two weeks, because I know what I got to do. You know, it would have been more healthy for me to open up this book. It would have been more healthy. I, without a doubt, it would have been more healthy for me to maintain my uh, my routine, wake up at my regular time, uh, do my my priorities and my in my milestones and in my journaling. It would have been more healthy. However, in that small season of my life, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. I just needed to take care of what was in front of me. I needed to get it done. I needed to get off my plate because I was I, I was just I was hard charging, high revving, right. And now that I'm back down, I'm back on my routine and here we go.
right? So you're going to have this, right? Where you're up, you're down, but you the goal is to try to bring it into this safe area where you're making progress in a healthy way. You're doing all your things in a healthy way. Relationships, personal health, uh, your work, all of the things. Um, and it was weird. Like looking back on this time, I look over that period, like that 60 days uh, where we where we placed the offer on the house, we were going through the mortgage process, and then when like the the everything kind of stalled out with the bank because of COVID and all the things going on, we went into this like kind of like this like stagnation mode where we were just kind of sitting and waiting, right? We were huddling, we were the lobsters under the rock, you know. We were we're just kind of waiting to try like where are we right now? Like what's going to happen? Are we going to move? Are we not going to move? Like where are we in life? And so we we're just sitting there. And I think what we were kind of doing maybe was like conserving energy, right? Like we were just, from a physiological standpoint, there was a lot of unknowns and we were just kind of like hanging there, right? Waiting for an answer. Doing that too much, unhealthy, right? So we kept moving forward, but we were still sort of sitting there waiting, right? And then once we got our answer, we were, because we were sort of well rested, we hard charged at it, we acted, right? So we were hard charging, getting our stuff done, going, and then we and then we sort of like take a step back. We take our, our foot off the accelerator, we rest a little bit, and then we get back into equilibrium. So we went like we went from like down here to up here, and then we kind of brought it back down, and now we're kind of bringing it up and we're just gonna kind of cruise control now going forward, still taking care of things, but still moving forward. And so where are you in your life there? Like what's the what's the thing in your life now that's operating out of balance? A lot of people are, you know, are you that person that's right now like, I'm stuck at home, so I'm not going to do anything, and I'm just going to drink a six pack of uh, of uh, Trulies or or what's the other one, White Claws, right? I'm just going to drink my White Claws all day. You know, is is that where you are? You're just kind of letting it go, or are you like, are you stressed out because you need to make money, because you need to manage your business, you need to get like, are you are you, are you watching the news too much? Are you stressed out and you're hard charging, hard revving? So where are you and what can you do to bring the needle down a little bit, to bring it more towards like a safe area where you can move forward, right? And so, you know, for me, you know, I think it's, it's, it's daily taking this, like, look at our goals and and where, where we want to be. And now we've had to adjust it now with this whole thing that's going on right now. We've had to adjust it, but we need to develop a new strategy. And one of the things that popped up for me, on Instagram was this thing from James Clear. If you've read Atomic Habits, great book. Um, He had this yesterday. Uh, The goal or a goal is a desired outcome. A strategy is a desired outcome combined with a plan for achieving it. Create strategies, not goals. Now, I will disagree to a point because I think if you don't have a solid goal, if you're like... For me, I didn't always have a strategy for getting a house, right? To, for moving my kids into a new neighborhood. I didn't always have a strategy, but I had that goal. That was my North Star goal for my family. And it has been for, I mean, I mean, literally at least five years, if not longer. And a lot of times I didn't know how it was going to happen. But it was the thing, I mean, we, uh, my wife and I, Oh God, I mean, this was maybe eight years ago. We actually printed out a picture of a model home in a plan that we liked that we drove by. And we printed out a model home of this gorgeous house. And I had it hanging on the wall when I woke up. It was hanging on the wall for a while. And I looked at it every day. It was completely unattainable. And we had no path to get there. But it was my North Star goal. So that strategy to have that happen, it wasn't like, it wasn't there, right? But my actions on a daily basis started aligning with making that goal happen. Now you can say this is a vision board type thing. You can say this is like a vibration type thing telling the universe what you want. The way I see it is that I knew what I wanted. And as I had to make little decisions day in and day out, I made the little decisions that aligned with moving me toward that, whether it was choosing not to go out to eat one night a week or choosing to stop golfing so much 
or um, not spending money uh, on a piece of furniture, which is actually a big decision we made many years. We were living in crappy furniture because, like literally furniture falling apart because if I would have purchased the furniture, number one, it would have taken away resources to buy a new house. And two, it would have almost said to the universe or myself, uh, I'm going to be comfortable in this place a little bit longer. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to put that out there. I didn't want to say, I don't want to make my house any more comfortable uh, because I wanted out of it. Right. And so all of these little decisions add up over time to get me into a place where we actually get what we want, which is so, you know, I didn't have a strategy, but after a while we started developing the strategy. So you can have your goals, you can have your, your pie in the sky, your dream, uh, and whoop, not that one, but you can, um, you can develop your strategy later, right? You can start to find a strategy, right? And so have your goal, clearly have your goal, want your goal, print your goal out, throw it on your wall, write it down every day in your define my day, have that goal. And even if you don't have a strategy, don't feel bad. You'll come up with a strategy over time. It's, you know, you can, you can come up with that strategy faster if you really think about it and like try to put a pen to paper. But a lot of times we just sort of need to sit around and wait and kind of like wait for that thing. Like if we keep our, our, our mind open uh, and our, you know, keep watching for like a, something to take advantage of or a situation that's good for us to move us toward our goal, things kind of happen when you're, when you look for opportunity in that way. Um, let's check out the comments here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So Bill says, Wayne Dyer, Being in Balance, great book. I am going to look at that. Being in Balance, awesome, thank you. See, I get more book recommendations from you guys. Thank you. I'm gonna have to add it to my list over here. Um, common Sense Choices, Nick. When you're going through life events, moving, death, sickness, birth, etc. We need to take the time needed and realize getting back to normal is the next right step from sis. Awesome, sis. Thank you. You're right. Right. Like things happen like tragedy, even like with death, like, you know, we have these things that that happen and we like the more we can be in balance during those moments, the better. Absolutely. But it doesn't always happen. Right. So you give yourself a little bit of grace and you get back to it. And I think the more practice we have in getting back to balance, the more we can maintain that balance in situations like this. I think, look, if I had started the define my day process 15 years ago, maybe I would have been more in balance in this move, right? Maybe I'm just not in practice enough. It's a possibility. When is the right day to start to find my day? Mary, I prefer ideally to fill in the the month goals on a Sunday night because I'm just sort of like decompressing and feeling it and it kind of motivates me. It takes the workload off a of Monday morning and I'm kind of feeling it and I'm looking forward and I'm feeling like kind of like uh, uh, just I'm, I'm feeling uh, real positive about where I'm going. So Sunday night kind of builds that excitement for Monday morning. Um, and then Monday is usually day one for me. And you can fill out Monday either the night before or the, the morning of, just depends on how you best think. Um, but yeah, I prefer uh, Sunday to be like that last day of the book, the last day of the, each week. Um, and it seems to be a great planning day for me. Just depends on kind of where your week falls. Kristen says, a mentor of mine has called it being stress addicted. Yeah, you're, yes. People like need the stress to tell them what to do, you know? Uh, you're so used to running at that high stress pace and the feeling of getting stuff done that it's hard to settle back to a normal, more balanced pace. I struggle with it constantly. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, I realized that myself. Uh, I, I talk about this driving home from work after doing Define My Day. Before Define My Day was even a book, it was just a worksheet, right? When I would just print it out every day and I would just do it every day. Um, and I was, I was following it like 100% for the first time ever. And I was driving home one day and I felt guilt because I was, 
I was driving home at like a normal time, like 5.30. Um, you know, I was going to be home for dinner. Um, and I felt guilt for not like being crazy through the day. And I was sitting at a red light and I'm thinking to myself, what? You're stupid. <laughs> you, you, you got exactly what you wanted by starting this process. You did the few things that you needed to get done, the big, the big priorities that would move your life forward. You got those done. The things you told yourself, this is the most important stuff. So you didn't answer a million emails. You didn't answer a million phone calls. You didn't do a lot of busy work. You weren't running around like a chicken with your head cut off. But you did these really important things. Why are you feeling guilty about that? These few things were much more important than any of the busy work that you've been doing. And, and that addiction to that feeling was what I was going through at that point. I had to consciously make a decision to say, no, it's okay. You did the big things. It's okay to not be a lunatic about the way you work. And so that's, that's it. That's exactly what you're talking about. Um, Mary bought your organizer for my son as a Christmas present. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, hello, Jess. Good to see you. Um, I will be purchasing several for myself and daughters. Thank you for discussing balance. You're welcome. I appreciate you joining me. Um, and thank you for contributing. I love it when you guys make comments because it, it you help, you help give me perspective and kind of direct me toward the right way to go for you. Um, I think that's called manifestation and it is, right? Um, you put your energy into what you want with your small steps or strategies. Good for you. And so Jenny, I, it's funny because people use manifest in a woo woo kind of way. So I always kind of like, I don't know, for me, I, I avoid the woo woo talk, right? But I know that I'm subscribing more to the woo woo than I used to. Uh, so it's, it's me walking a fine line, uh, to make it not sound too woo woo in my own mind, but still like kind of do the stuff that I know works. And you're absolutely right. Um, people use manifest as a word a lot, but it, it's the truth. You're, you're creating your own, your own life based on these things that you constantly keep moving your actions toward. And it's not the matter. It's not a matter for me. It's just not a matter of telling the universe what I want. It's me directing my actions to move me toward what I want. Right. So if I want a bagel on the other side of the room, you know, I can go in that straight line, like, but a lot of times there's obstacles to getting to that bagel. And so I need to constantly kind of move in that direction to get that bagel. We're kind of doing that in a more complicated way, like whether it's buying a house or getting a job promotion or meeting uh, somebody that we want. Like if, we, or if we're attracted to somebody and we want to make our way over there, you have to take a strategy to get there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, and you're kind of moving in that direction, right? And and that's that's the way we handle life. It's just much bigger and much more complicated. Um, I was trying to find work before the COVID-19 and I did stall out for quite a bit. I recently started to find my day after talking to my husband and we decided we'll just focus on health, things around the house, and maybe taking an online class. That's awesome. I'm trying to figure out what my goals are short-term and long-term. DMD is helping me not stall out. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I love it because a lot of times, look, and I, I relate this to how I felt uh, years ago. I didn't know exactly what my goals were from a career standpoint. I knew like the vague things. I knew we wanted to get into a new neighborhood, right? I knew uh, we needed to make more money. I knew that we wanted to fix our relationship, but I didn't have like real solid goals. But so doing this process kind of lifted the fog. It helped me learn, uh, like, and, and kind of crystallize the path of where I wanted to go. So you don't necessarily know where you need to go. A lot of times you just know you want to make things better. And then as you move forward, it just gets a little bit easier for you. You know, it's, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I hope I explained that correctly. Um, you know, like a lot of times you're just starting this process because you know, you want to make things better, but you don't know in which way, you know, you want to, um, you know, you know, you want to improve your life, but you're not exactly sure. You just know the general direction. And the more you do this process, the more you can narrow that direction because you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to go the wrong way. You're going to invest your time in things that are not important to you. And you're going to say, oh, no, that was wrong. And you're going to go back and, and refine the direction that you're going. So I'm glad, uh, thank you for bringing that up and I'm glad you found us and I'm glad uh, it's helping you out. Very cool. 
All right, I'm going to head out and get on with my day. We've got a lot of things to do here, but I'm doing it in balance. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, have a great day. Keep moving forward. I'll see you soon.